my name is Matt Dees. I'm a product owner here at cPanel, and for the past year, I've been working on Easy Apache 4, which is the new modernized web stack for cPanel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about customizing Easy Apache 4. In specific, we're gonna discuss the philosophy of Easy Apache 4, what we're doing, why we're gonna do it, some useful tools and tricks so you're ready to start administering systems using Easy Apache 4, and tools used in building RPMs for Easy Apache 4. So we're gonna start out with the philosophy. One of the main things that I always hear about cPanel is that we're using source compilations for creating our, our Apache stack. And really in 2015, that's somewhat ridiculous. Uh, we want to modernize our web stack so that you can have quicker install times. If you want you know, five minute provisioning, this is one of those things we have to do. We're also trying to lay a foundation for more advanced features. Uh, we haven't decided what, ex what exact direction we want to go yet, but we know if we're ever going to offer container management or web only or any sort of uh, more advanced web feature, this is a prerequisite to doing it. We're also using system standard tools and everything because really we do not want to have to tell you how to build an RPM or do any sort of customization to your, to your software. The reason for this is, is that we feel that if you want to do customizations, you should have the ability to do that and you shouldn't have to come to us necessarily for every single detail of help along the way. By using tools like RPM and Yum, we're launching with documentation that honestly we never would be able to provide because it's been developed over 20 years by thousands of users. So now we're gonna start moving into the first part of our presentation, which is information a system administrator should know. The first thing I'm gonna answer is why Yum? A lot of the times when I've talked about this project to people, they're asking, why are you using Yum? Why aren't you using you know, my favorite tool? We're using Yum because it's a tool that's been used for 10 years by Enterprise Linux. It has, it's well-documented, it's flexible, it has a rich plugin ecosystem, and mirroring on it is one of the easiest system administrative tasks you're ever gonna come across. Specifics to how we're using it is, as with any project, we're going to have uh, things that we have to do in order to ensure that it's successful. So the first thing that you should probably be aware of is that every single package that we ship has a namespace of EA dash. The reason for this is, is that if we do not have that, that package namespace in place, we have the ability to have conflicts. And at that point, having easy Apache 4 and say EPL on your system at the same time could actually create some major dependency issues on your server. Uh, we've also developed a new plugin called Universal Ho Hooks. It's open source. We're gonna talk about it a little bit more in a few seconds here. Every package that we're shipping is free and open source software, and we're posting it on GitHub open build service. And of course, we have our own mirrors that contain this information. With EA4, you do not have to use our repositories. If you wanna customize the packages that we're shipping, one of the major features of Easy Apache 4 is that we're trying to make that as easy as possible for you to do. We've implemented JSON profiles, which are just a way for package selection to be reproducible across a fleet of servers. And PHP is distributed using software collections, which is an open standard created by Red Hat. The first thing we're gonna talk about is Yum Plugin Universal Hooks. This is an open source plugin created by us that's used for triggering actions after a package updates. The reason that we created this is that if we were to do something like just trigger actions inside a post script inside an RPM spec file, we would, we would actually encounter quite a few issues. We'd have to duplicate that code across every single PHP RPM we have, for example. It doesn't allow third parties to go, oh, hey, we see you're updating Apache. We want to do these things now. And Without having created this plugin, this entire system would be a lot harder to work with. The way this works is that we have a directory, Etsy yum universal hooks. It's not designed to be worked with C, it's not designed to work only with cPanel. So if you have a regular CentOS system, you can use with that as well. But inside that directory, you have the ability to say EA wildcard. So anytime that a package with EA dash at the front of it is updated, you can then have a directory of scripts that you can place, that you can put in place. This allows you to create trigger custom actions at any point in the provisioning process. So if you want to say, notify your system that, hey, we run an update, you should be aware of this at some central monitoring place, you could do that through this system. The next thing we're gonna talk about is EA4 profiles. EA4 profiles are a continuation of the idea of profiles that we had in Easy Apache 3. These are used for creating a reproducible selection of packages on your server. This is so you can distribute packages and have the same configuration of Easy Apache across a fleet of servers without having to do a whole lot of work or extra configuration management. Profiles are stored in Etsy cPanel EA4 profiles. Under that, there are three directories, user, vendor, cPanel. The user directory is intended for end users to be able to create their own prof profiles. So anything that they customize in the UI would happen there. Vendors intended for a, like a VPS reseller to be able to distribute profiles to their servers. So if you're a big host, 
you can say for our VPS servers, we suggest using these profiles. It's just another way that you can kind of offer customizations that not every cPanel host out there has. And of course, the cPanel directory contains the profiles that we ship and we've tested. One thing I should note about these profiles is that you should always QA them. If you do not do proper testing on these profiles, Easy Apache 4 is just a wrapper around Yum. So you need to make sure that these profiles work as you expect them to, without just blindly putting things into them. Now we're gonna take a look at a profile. As you can see here, a pro this is a JSON file that contains a profile. We have a few keys in here, first being the version. This is actually benign at this point, but what I found in the past that when I create a file like this, if I don't put a version in it, if I'm trying to track it down later, I'm gonna have some major issues figuring out what happened to it, why it is the way it is. Then we have a description. This is the description that appears in the, in the user interface for Easy Apache 4. Then we have a list of packages. These packages, EA-Apache 2.4, for example, specifies to the UI that, hey, I need to install these packages on this server. Then we have the name, that's the title of the profile, and then tags. These are the little green tags that show up in the UI underneath the profile. It's a rather basic system using just JSON that is a quite a bit more simple than what we've done in the past. Now we're gonna talk about software collections. As I mentioned earlier, software collections are a standard created by Red Hat for creating alternate installations of software on a system. Using software collections, we're able to distribute PHP 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.6, and even PHP 7 all in the same system at the same time. This is done by placing a file system inside of opt that can be used and triggered via the SCL command for loading alternate versions. The reason we chose software collections is because it being created upstream means that you have documentation and examples, and yet again, more information on how to use this thing than we could ever provide you. Software collections are managed via the SCL command. If you look at this example, you can see at the top we've run php-v. This is just running user bin PHP like you would on any other system. In this case, it's PHP 5.4. Now, on the second command, we run SCL enable, the name of the SCL root, which in this case is ea-php 5.6, along with the same command. And you can see that it's now running PHP 5.6. This works by editing the path environment variable to put the directory where PHP 5.6 is stored at the front of it. This means that if you want to call an SCL installation of something via a full path rather than a relative path, it should work just fine without the SCL utility. Now we're gonna talk about some useful YUM tricks. These are tricks intended that for system administrators that when they're working on a cPanel system running Easy Apache 4, that should make their lives quite a bit easier. The first one is YUM shell. When I came to the Easy Apache 4 project, I actually hadn't heard of Yum Shell. I'd seen it in like some help output and things like that, but I hadn't actually used it. And what Yum Shell is, is it's a way of performing install and erase transactions in the same transaction. This means that if we're trying to change out a required component that may actually delete all of the software on a server, we have a way of switching it out without having to install all of your Apache stack and then reinstall it again. Here's an example of what a yum shell session looks like. At the top, you see we just type in yum shell. We type erase EA Apache 2.4 mod npm worker. And then we type install EA Apache 2.4 mod npm event, and then just type in the command run. At this point, you'll see in the table below that it's both installing and removing uh, an npm for Apache in a single command. The reason why this is valuable is that if we were doing this individually, we would have removed the entire Apache stack and caused server downtime. Because of the hooks that were previously mentioned, uh, cPanel will automatically be updated with the information that, hey, we're running npm event, and the proper things will have been run to verify that the system is up and running with these packages. For example, a restart will be run, rebuild hp.conf, quite a few other things that, any, that have to happen after easy Apache is run. The next trick we're gonna talk about is how to mirror a YUM repository. When I talk about this project, one of the things I keep on coming across is a lot of people don't realize how simple YUM is to work with. In this case, for mirroring a YUM repository, all we have to do is download the, the RPMs into a directory and then run a command and they're now available on a mirror. So we run a make dir on a directory, foo, for example, and then we download all our packages to it using this wget command here. There are numerous other ways of doing this. Uh, you can use wget rsync. Uh, everybody has their own favorite way to scrape an HTTP mirror. And then we just run the create repo command. At this point, we have a fully functional YUM repository. By using this method for mirroring, we're able to control distribution of RPM versions on a large number of servers by just editing the repo file to point to wherever we keep this YUM repository. We can put it as a file local to the server or available on HTTP server, an FTP server, or numerous other things. 
If you're just trying to save bandwidth by doing this, say you're in Singapore or Africa or someplace that we classically don't have that great connectivity with, you could actually run a cron job to re-download and recreate this repo on a regular basis with EA4, and then you're able to have very fast update speeds for your servers and save yourself bandwidth in the update process. Another question I keep on coming across is, how do I downgrade a package? Or how do I keep, keep Yum from updating a package? To do this, you use the Yum version lock plugin. This is just a very simple plugin that creates a file in Etsy Yum plugin conf.d version lock.list that basically says, Yum, you should never update this package past the version I have specified here. By using Yum version lock, we are able to hold back a server from ever receiving updates, which can be very useful if you have some crazy hack in place or something that you have done that may not be the best idea, but sometimes business is more important than doing things right the technical way. So if you look at the output here, we've run yum version lock EA Apache 2.4. This means that the Apache stack will never be updated on the system. We run yum update below when there's uh, Apache updates available. And in the output here, you see that it's unable to re resolve any dependency on EA Apache 2.4 because it will not update it. Because of this, you have now ensured that your system is always running the same version of the software. To remove your version lock, you just run yum version lock delete, then the version of the RPM that was output from when you added it, as shown in the first and last lines here. Now we're going to talk about some tools for managing EA4 customizations. First, let me state to you, I'm not going to teach you how to build an RPM. The process of creating RPMs is very well documented. If you want to know how to build an RPM, I highly suggest looking at the book Maximum RPM, which is freely available on the internet. This is kind of the RPM Bible. It's been around for about 15 years, and if you want to know anything about how that system works, it is your oracle of information. I also suggest looking at the Open Build Service tutorial, which is a tool that we've been using here at cPanel for the past year, and I'll talk a little bit more about it in a second. And if you look up software collections, chances are you'll find some very good tutorials on how to build uh, RPMs for software collections. So let's start out with the tools you'll need. The very first thing you'll need is a development license. Uh, development licenses are free licenses that we provide for cr creation of software or testing of cPanel. By using it, if you are a partner with cPanel, you, I can tell you for sure that you will receive a development license. If you're creating a plugin, we tend to give those away to plugin developers. And if you don't fit either of those two categories, contact a customer service agent. There may be something they can do to help you. You'll also need a way to build RPM. As I mentioned earlier, I'm quite a big fan of the Open Build Service system. The open Build Service is a tool created by OpenSUSE for building packages in their ecosystem. But the most interesting thing about it is that it supports CentOS and RHEL distributions as well. Using Open Build Service, you, we, you can actually automatically rebuild your RPMs against ours whenever we update them. So when we're working on a release, we upload it to Open Build Service, and we can verify that your RPMs build against ours by us just running a what's essentially a commit. Uh, the other tools you want to use, if you do not want to use something like Open Build Service, are, are RPM Build and Mock. These are the classic tools for managing RPMs on a Red Hat system. They're well documented, very good, and very useful to look at. The next thing you're going to need is a copy of our specs and sources. You can get those on GitHub and on our GitHub account, which is shown on this slide, or you can get them off build.opensuse.org. And we have our own independent software uh, namespace on there just for packages that cPanel provide. Now, just telling you that we have some packages out there may not be enough. You may want to know, hey, I want to know how to distribute memcached. Well, if you want to know how to cache, you might want to look at packages.fedoraproject.org. This is Fedora's Git repo. It contains a RPM spec files for every package contained in Fedora, and quite a few of them contained in Enterprise Linux as well. If you're looking for information on how something is packaged, you're looking for spec files, this is the place to go. Another useful place to look is Remy Repo. Remy Repo is a collection of software collections created by uh, Remy Colette. The purpose of these are for providing software collections on enterprise Linux systems. Since most cPanel Linux are, since most cPanel systems are running enterprise Linux of some form or another, you can go onto Remy Repo and find a package that either will directly work with cPanel or will work with very minor customizations. And then yet again, our GitHub is a wonderful place to find examples of how we're using RPMs and Yum. I want to thank everybody for taking time to listen to this presentation. If you're looking for more information on how to work with cPanel and RPMs, please email me at matt at cpanel.com.